Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Myself, Dr. Ajay Avathi, Global Category Manager, Nutrition and Health for EW Nutrition. I welcome you all to EW Nutrition's Partner in Progress Connect webinar. At EW Nutrition, we are always excited to be part of our customer's journey to make animal production more sustainable, but at the same time, more profitable. And part of this commitment is to bring the knowledge and the innovative technologies to our customers. And as we all know, gut health is the most important factor in reducing antibiotics and improving performance of the animals. It is very, very important that our future innovations of next generation solutions target gut health specifically. And that is why at EW Nutrition, sometimes we say, think outside the box to help inside or improve inside the gut. In today's session, our guest and panelist, so Dr. Richard Bailey, Mr. Klaas Kruger, Dr. Ruturaj Patil, and Dr. Thwan Van Garve, and myself as your host, will discuss why broilers are prone to gut health-related challenges. What are the uh, factors at work and how to tackle these challenges in modern poultry production? And before we begin, a very small note for our audiences, please, please, please put your questions in Q&A uh, section of, the, uh, of your screen. Please click on it and keep adding your questions as we go along. At the end of the webinar, our panelists will take your questions and, and answer them. Just, just in case, if your question is not answered, we will make sure that we follow up with the answers directly to you in following days. So to start with, it's my pleasure to, uh, to introduce Dr. Richard Bailey as our keynote speaker today. Dr. Bailey did his PhD from uh, University of East Anglia, uh, United Kingdom. Dr. Bailey has earned his reputation as one of the leading poultry uh, gut health scientists around the globe by combining the fundamental knowledge of gut health with practical implications of it. Dr. Bailey has been a gut health scientist at Avia Jane for more than a decade. His main area of interest is, of course, the poultry gut health, but specifically modulating microbiota in absence of antibiotics. Dr. Bailey, we all are so eager to listen to you, and stage is all yours. Thank you, and uh, yeah, good morning from Edinburgh, Scotland. Um, it's a pleasure to be talking to you today, and I'm going to be covering the topic of understanding and promoting gut health in broilers. Within this presentation, I will cover the fundamental aspects of intestinal health, factors that influence intestinal health, how we can then promote intestinal health, and then just finish off with some key take-home messages. When we talk about gut health, I think it's always very important to try and define exactly what we mean by the term. It is a broad topic and something we talk about a lot, but I think homing in on the key aspects is really important so we can really understand what we're talking about. And I see that gut health has four key aspects. Firstly, it's the ability to defend against gut pathogens. It's the ability to break down the feed into its constituent parts. It's the ability to then absorb all those digested nutrients. And something also we have to remember about, about gut health is the role of the immune system. So within gut health, we have the, it's the ability of the immune system to respond correctly to normal changes in the bird's environment. We know that the gut is, a, is the organ of digestion, but 70% of a bird's circulating immune cells are within the gut. So the gut is not only for digestion, it's one of the main uh, immune interfaces of the animal. In order for gut health to be optimal, we need to have good tissue development. We need to have optimal immune system development and optimal gut microbiota development. And these three, three factors all work together to promote gut health. And if there's a failure of any one of these components, we will see poor gut health and we will see a detrimental effect on the bird. Another thing that we have to think about when it comes to gut health is that it is dynamic. And throughout the life of the animal, it does require different things. And there are also knock-on effects in the gut. Um, so when we think about gut health, we have to think about the, the entire life of the animal from the moment it goes into the incubator and goes through, through incubation, 
to the brooding of the chick and until we get to the, the adult broiler. So we always have to be thinking about gut health. It's not the sort of thing that we just think about when we have a problem. We always have to be considering what we can do to promote gut health. When we look at the gut, it is essentially a tube that runs from the beak of the bird down to the rectum. And along this, this tube, there are specialized regions, each of which play a specific role in the digestion process. When the bird first eats the food, it passes down into the crop which is a storage pouch in the esophagus, which allows the bird to take in food and then it gets slowly released to the, to the rest of the gut. Whilst the food is in the crop, it does undergo a small degree of fermentation, um, but then it will pass through into the stomach regions. First, it will enter the proventriculus where it gets mixed with um, acid and, and the enzyme pepsin. And then from this uh, proventriculus, it passes into the gizzard. And the gizzard is very important because this is what grinds the feed, because we know obviously chickens don't have teeth, so they need to have some organ within their digestive tract to grind down the feed into smaller particles, and that is where the gizzard um, plays a role. And once, while the food is being ground up in the gizzard and it gets mixed with the acid and the, and the pepsin enzyme, it prepares the proteins, it pre-digests the proteins for going into the small intestine. And this is a very crucial role for, for digestion and for gut health. The food then passes into the small intestine where it goes through the duodenum, jejunum and ileum. And in these regions, we get the full chemical breakdown of the feed and all the beneficial nutrients will be absorbed. So that by the time the digester reaches the end of the ileum, all that is left is the non-digestible components that the bird is unable to digest. These, this will then pass out of the colon um, as, as a fecal dropping, or maybe once, twice, maybe three times a day, it gets pushed back up the gut into the seeker, where all those non-digestible components, such as cellulose and, and, comp and sort of the, the plant fibers, get fermented by the bacteria that reside in there to form useful um, organic acids, short chain fatty acids and vitamins, all of which can be used by the host for extra benefit from the diet. One of the key, one of the key aspects of gut health is the, develop, is the early development, specifically the development of the villi. Obviously gut development starts in the egg, so it's very important to ensure good incubation conditions. But at hatch, during brooding, the chick undergoes rapid growth and the gut actually de develops around four times quicker than the rest of the bird. So it really is a key point of the bird's life for boosting gut development. And the development of the villi is very, very important. During the fir first four to 10 days of life, there are cells at the bottom of the villi and in the middle of the villi that rapidly divide. And with that division, the villi get longer and longer. This growth is dependent on there being food in the gut. It gets stimulated by the beneficial bacteria that reside in the gut. And this growth is inhibited by stress, which could be um, poor access to food and water, or if the temperature is not right in the shed, or the humidity is not right. When the chicks don't feel comfortable, their gut will not grow. And getting the growth of the villi during this period is, is critical because after the initial brooding period, the rate of growth of the villi slows down. The cells that were in the middle of the villi developing, uh, dividing stop. They become just normal, regular epithelial cells. And so that means we lose a growth center. And the consequence of that is that if we lose any growth while we have all these growth centers active during brooding, we never ever get that back. So that means if we have poor brooding, the villi in the birds will be shorter and they will be shorter for the life of the bird. And as a good rule of thumb, if you have good seven day body weights, you will have had good villi development. If we now think about the surface of the gut um, and what lines the villi, we have a single layer of epithelial cells held together by, uh, by tight junctions, which glue these cells together to form the gut barrier. And maintaining this gut barrier is essential for optimal gut, uh, gut health because it keeps the, the bacteria that are within the gut out of the gut tissues. But this barrier can fail and we can lose those tight junctions and that allows the cells to open up and for bacteria to pass through into the gut tissues and into the bloodstream. And what can cause a failure of the, of the gut barrier? Well, it can be inadequate nutrition, poor brooding, infection with things like coccidiosis, 
mycotoxins, which is are very good at destroying those tight junctions, and also stresses like heat stress, where the gut comes under a lot of oxidative stress and it starts to destroy those gut tissues. And the consequence of failure of the gut barrier is nutrient malabsorption, which leads to bacterial overgrowth. We can see inflammation, and we increase the risk of opportunistic infections. So a classical one would be something like necrotic enteritis from Clostridium perfringens. But if the bacteria get into the joints, uh, sorry, into the bloodstream, it can pass around the bird's body and infect the joints and the organs. And this can be bacteria like E. coli or Staphylococcus. All of these bacteria are normal residents of the, of the intestinal tract, but if they get into the, into the bloodstream and the gut, they do cause problems. Now, if we look a bit closer at the, the gut microbiota, this is a large community of bacteria that resides in the gut. And in the chicken, it's thought to be made up of around seven to 800 different species of bacteria. And it is a mix of both favorable and unfavorable bacteria. When everything is going well in the gut, where we have a nice environment for the birds, the birds are getting good quality feed, we have more of the good bacteria. But when the bird starts to undergo pressure, such as uh, if there's poor feed quality, if the environment isn't correct, or we have an infection, the unfavorable bacteria start to dominate, and that's when we start to see problems with things like dysbacteriosis. And the gut microbiota is very important because it does play a major role in animal health and immune system development. So the, the, the microbiota has, has multiple roles. It helps to prevent uh, pathogen colonization. Um, it helps to stimulate the gut tissues. And as I say, it stimulates that immune system development. So we need to help um, that, that community um, thrive and, and help its development. When we look at the micro, microbiota development, um, the, the microbiota is not a static entity and it does change throughout the life of the bird. And I always like to compare the development of the microbiota to the development of a forest. So a forest starts out as bare ground and there is a succession of simple plants and trees until finally the, this, the soil environment becomes rich enough to support the development of large mature trees and we get a nice stable ecosystem. And the exact same thing happens in the gut. A hatch, the, the gut is relatively sterile and free of bacteria, but when the birds then go to the farm and start eating feed, they start to take in bacteria from the environment. And these pioneering bac bacteria start to change that environment in the gut. For example, they start to reduce the oxygen level to allow some of the, the, the strict anaerobic bacteria to grow and thrive. And we go through a succession of bacteria until finally we reach a stable ecosystem of bacteria. And when we reach this stable stage with the bacteria, this is when we have optimal gut function. It's when the gut will be running at its most um, efficient. The first sort of stage of, of um, stability in the gut can come after seven to 10 days of age. Um, and we, you know, we want to promote that. Um, but if there is any pressures on the birds that can put, put pressure on the, the development of, of this, um, this system. So what we want to do during brooding is do everything we can to promote that, that beneficial bacterial community and, and inhibit the growth of potential pathogens. Something we also have to remember is that during this period, if we ever give the birds antibiotics, and I know sometimes we have to for infection, we do actually impact upon the beneficial bacteria because antibiotics do not just target um, pathogens, they also target some of the the helpful members of the microbiota. So we always have to bear that in mind when we give antibiotics. And whenever we do give an antibiotic, we always must follow up with, with products that will help re-establish this beneficial community. And so if we now think about what happens during the gut in, uh, imbalance, so we can have gut disruption and there can be many causes of gut disruption, which I'll go to um, in the next slide. But ultimately we get gut disruption, we then see malabsorption of nutrients from the small intestine. This means there's more nutrients available for the bacteria, so we get a bacterial overgrowth. And when we see this bacterial overgrowth, we get excess gas production, which is why we start to get those gassy gut contents. Um, we can see toxic amine production from the, from the proteins that the bacteria are, are metabolizing. Some bacteria will also inactivate bile acids, and bile acids are very important because they're the, the the chemical that allow fat and water to mix within the gut and allow, us, allow the bird to absorb 
absorb fat from the diet. So if we start to lose those bile acids, the bird can no longer um, absorb um, enough fat, which obviously they use for energy. And when we see this bacterial overgrowth, the immune system starts to respond. Some of the bacteria that take advantage of this kind of uh, situation are very good at annoying the immune system. And so the bird starts to push immune cells into the gut and we can start to see a wetter um, intestinal content. And this ultimately results in further disruption, which then feeds back into this cycle. And this cycle is what I call the dysbacteriosis cycle. And as I said um, at the beginning of this slide, there are many, many things that can cause a disruption in the gut, but the consequence is always the same. We see malabsorption, this bacterial overgrowth, putting more pressure on the gut. So now if we think about the factors that can affect gut health, um, it can be the environment in the shed. For example, the, if the ventilation or temperature is not right, if we have poor litter or water quality. The feed is a major um, influencer of gut health. This could be from mycotoxins or just the feed form or the feed ingredients. Gut development is important, whether this is, um, we're having an issue during incubation or brooding. Infection can put pressure on the gut as can uh, medication, as I mentioned earlier, antibiotics can, can actually have a negative impact on gut health. Um, biosecurity, because that can be a route of infection into the shed if we don't have good biosecurity, and also stress um, on the bird. But one thing we always have to remember is that these factors can be additive. So if we have more than one problem going on at any one time, we can actually have more of an issue in the gut. I do, however, believe that the gut has the ability to cope with a certain amount of pressure. And if, and if we do see some of these factors impacting the birds, the bird can get through it. But there is a threshold. And at that threshold, that is when the bird will start to suffer and we will start to see a gut imbalance. So for example, if we have poor gut development and we have poor water quality and we have a minor coccidiosis challenge, we're pushing that the bird's gut up to its threshold. And then say, for example, we have a feed change, which we know will change the bacterial activity. At that point, that's enough pressure to push the bird over its threshold and we see an issue. Our first thought will be to blame the feed and say, okay, there's a problem with the feed because that's what we've done recently and, and we've got this problem. But in fact, the issue is all those things underneath that threshold. And so whenever we have a gut health problem, we always have to go to a list like this and tick the box and check that each one of these factors is good. Um, and that really helps us home in on exactly what an issue may be on, on the farm. So I men mentioned stress and the stresses can be from physical or environmental factors. And one of the issues that we have with, with stresses is that prolonged exposure to these stresses can impact upon the immune system. And that can lead to um, immunosuppression, or in the younger bird, it can actually impact upon immune development. And also when an animal is stressed, we, do, we release certain hormones and new, neurotransmitters into the gut, so, such as noradrenaline. And bacteria actually have receptors for, for these kinds of um, neurotransmitters. And this can be bacteria like E. coli, Salmonella, Enterococcus, um, Staphylococcus, Campylobacter. And in the presence of noradrenaline, you can actually see these bacteria increasing in their rate of growth. And in some cases, if there's enough uh, activation through this pathway, we can actually see virulence pathways getting switched on. And this is something we definitely see with, uh, with E. coli. And so what we can do is use gut health additives over these periods to reduce the overgrowth of these bacteria. I mentioned that diet was an influencer. And this can be from the diet formulation, whether that we see um, when we change raw ingredients, um, also when we, we change raw ingredients, if we change a protein source or a carbohydrate source or the density of the, the nutrients, we do influence the microbiota and we can put pressure on the gut system when we see that microbiota change. And so one thing we can do is, is definitely avoid large changes in raw materials when we do a feed change. Mycotoxins can be very important um, because they can cause irritation of the gut, gut, resulting in inflammation and tissue damage. They can also um, cause shrinkage of the villi, which reduces that surface area of the, um, the gut for the absorption of nutrients. And again, we can see immunosuppression with mycotoxins. And if we remember that the gut has all these circulating immune cells, if they're eating something which is immunosuppressive, then we're going to see an impact on the immune system. 
infection, um, this can definitely put pressure on the gut, whether this is uh, clinical or subclinical. One of the most common things I see around the world is, uh, as an issue is subclinical coccidiosis. And with the subclinical conditions, we don't usually see an increase in mortality, but we do see a reduction in performance and we see FCR starting to rise and body weight starting to drop. And so we have to make sure we have good biosecurity to keep disease out of the sheds. We also have good, need to have good vaccination programs so that we're not putting undue pressure on the birds. Water quality is one of, one of the most important things when it comes to gut health especially in this era, era, era while we're trying to reduce the amount of antibiotics we use in our birds. And so we need to give the birds good quality water. And it's also very important to understand what, what the water is you're giving the birds, because we know that, that the biochemistry of water can change. We can have different pH levels. We can have different mineral contents. So for example, if we have more, uh, more alkaline water, we do actually increase the risk of uh, lime scale formation in the water but also bacteria like E. coli and salmonella survive better in water that is more alkaline. Also, if we have higher levels of minerals such as iron or manganese in the water, that can stimulate the growth of bacteria such as E. coli. And so we really need to understand what's in our water and so that we can take any steps um, to reduce the impact of these, sort of, uh, these negative con conditions. And having a good water sanitation protocol is essential for gut health throughout the life of the chicken. So first of all, before we put our birds into the shed, we need to remove the biofilm and scale from the water lines. We can do this with uh, hydrogen peroxide for the biofilm and a weak acid um, to remove any lime scale. Through the life of the flock, we want to ensure that the water is sanitized. And this can be done with uh, things like chlorine, chlorine dioxide, or hydrogen peroxide, all of these things are very good sanitizers. But we have to make sure we use the right amount and you, targeting um, an ORP, oxidative reduction potential of, of 650 millivolts or more will ensure that we have good killing ability of the water. It's also very, very beneficial to acidify the water because not only will that help the bird's digestion because they tend, the gut tends to work a little bit better when it's slightly more acidic, but also that will have an impact on the bacteria that may be coming in the water. So as I mentioned earlier, when the water is more alkaline, it can be a little bit more um, favorable for bacteria. So by acidifying the water, that, that can really help. And if we have birds that are growing for a longer period of time, very good to flush the, the lines just to prevent any biofilm building up. And we can do this with, with hydrogen peroxide at around 50 parts per million. So if now we think about how we can promote gut health um, in, in this area, era where, where we're reducing antibiotic usage, there's a lot of products out there which we call alternatives to antibiotics. But I actually like to think of it more as an alternative strategy because a lot of these products cannot be used exactly the same as an antibiotic. And also there's a wide range of products which can help the bird in different, in different ways. And so with this theme of thinking outside the box, we have to think about alternative strategies when it comes to managing gut health. And I see that there are three major phases in the bird's life. We have the development phase where we have the development of the gut tissues, the gut immunity and the gut microbiota, where we're setting up the bird um, for its life and we're giving the gut everything it needs to, to provide a solid foundation. We then have the transition phase. And this is the point in the bird's life where it may be more at risk of being uh, imbalanced. And this can be around feed changes, vaccinations, sudden changes in the environment or, or when we handle the birds. And really the aim during this, this phase is to prevent the reduction in nutrient absorption and prevent any overgrowth of less favorable bacteria. And so if we know when the a problem may, may come in the bird's life, we can target that with, with specific products. We then have the maintenance phase. And this is when the gut is all developed, we have a nice stable microbiota. And here we want to promote integrity and ensure that the gut is supported to conserve that homeostasis in the gut and keep it nice and balanced. So if we now think about what gut health additives are available, we have the question, what do we choose? And there is a wide range of products on the market. We have the phytogenic plant, plant extracts, we have direct fed microbials, we have organic acids, prebiotics, 
Manan oligosaccharides, which can inhibit the colonization of bacteria like E. coli. We have bacterial and yeast fermentation products and also feed enzymes. Whilst, and whilst we may not think of feed enzymes as being gut health additives um, directly, they help with digestion, which takes some of the pressure off the gut. All of these products work differently. Some will improve gut integrity. Some will stimulate or provide a beneficial flora. Some will improve gut development. Some will improve gut function and some will inhibit certain pathogens. And so it's always important to firstly understand what your problem is. So if we go back to the list that I had a few slides ago, where we have all those factors that it can influence the gut. And if we understand what's going on in the gut, we can then look for a product that will, will solve that. Some products will only do one of these, but we do get multi-mode products where they, they have the ability to, to help with gut integrity and inhibit pathogens or help gut function and gut development. So it's always good to understand what's going on in a product and to make sure we choose the right product for our problem. So if we're homing on, on the different phases, so if we think about the development phase, the first thing we want to do with our chicks is get feed into them as soon as possible. And that will stimulate the development of the gut and stimulate that villi growth. We want to make sure that brooding is correct so that the birds want to eat and they're, they're up and active because that is gonna help the growth, their growth and development. We also want to provide gut health products that will boost early gut development, inhibit pathogens that are of importance to the, to the younger birds such as um, E. coli, and also promote that seeding of the gut with beneficial bacteria, really to push that gut development to its, to its max. So we have the optimal um, gut environment to ensure the birds are better equipped to cope with any challenge that may come later in their life. If we then look at the transition phase, this is, as I mentioned, when the gut is at risk of becoming imbalanced. And the first thing we can do is, is minimize the number of intestinal stresses at any one time so that we're not overloading the gut and pushing it up towards its threshold. So for example, if we know that, that the peak coxie challenge in, in, the, in the farm is around 21 days, we don't want to be doing anything else to the birds during that period. We want to give the birds a chance to, to just deal with that, that coxie challenge. But one thing we can also do is use gut health additives such as phytogenic products um, over these risk, this, these risk periods. So for example, if we have at day 24 a feed change, and we know that when we do that feed change, we often see um, a, a little bit of wetness in the gut, we can go in at day 23, 24, 25, 26, just to support the gut during this transition to prevent that overgrowth of these less favorable bacteria. The gut will always you know, sort itself out, but you know, we know that a day or two's low loss of growth in a broiler can have an impact on overall FCR. So if we can strategically help the bird when it needs it, we will we minimize that risk of losing out on performance. We then have our maintenance phase, and this is once the gut is fully developed, and we just really need to, to support that, that integrity and support that, uh, that gut function. And this can be done with multi-mode gut health products such as the phytogenics or organic acids. And as the bird gets older, it could be that, you know, if, if everything's going well on the farm, we can just, you know, maybe once a week, just top the birds up with, with a product um, just to, to help push the gut in the right direction and keep it happy. We also want to have, make sure we have good biosecurity and water sanitation, because as I mentioned, they're critical for maintaining gut health. But one thing that we definitely have to do throughout the life of the bird to maintain gut health is regularly monitor the gut um, so that we can, if we see any problems, we can deal with them quickly. Because you know, as we're in, in, a, in an era where we don't want to use antibiotics, when we see a gut health problem, we don't want to go in with, uh, with an antibiotic. We want to use other kinds of products and reduce the risk on the farm. And the quicker we deal with the problem, the better, because we're going to prevent it from causing um, any loss in performance. And one of the best indicators of gut health we have is the feces. Um, if we walk into the shed and we see nice healthy cecal droppings like we see here on the left, or we see good and we see good uh, fecal droppings, then everything is okay. Because if we have good droppings, that means the gut is functioning correctly and we do not have a gut health problem. But if we walk into the shed and we start to see droppings like this, where we have frothy fecal, uh, fecal droppings, we see feed passage, we see mucus, we see wet droppings, 
that tells us we have a gut health problem because it means we're not getting the full absorption of, of the nutrients, we're getting improper digestion, leading to a bacterial overgrowth. We can go in and, and investigate by opening up the birds, looking at the gut tissues, um, and, and just trying to work out what the problem is, going to our list um, and checking that everything is, is right, checking our water quality. But one thing I would always recommend is that the minute you start to see gut health problems, go in with a gut health additive. Um, so for example, um, go in with a, a phytogenic product, an organic acid product, and give it to the birds for three to four days. And the reason I say that, that three, three to four days is because that is the time it typically takes for the gut cells to completely renew themselves. And so if we give a gut health product during that, that period, we just give the gut chance to rebuild itself and sort out any problems. And as I said on previously, the faster we do this, the better, because it gets the birds back on track as soon as possible. So to summarize, we need to ensure optimal brooding to promote the best gut development. We need that gut to set itself up um, for the rest of the life of the bird. We need to understand what the gut needs at, any, at each time point in its life so that we can support the bird accordingly. We need to make sure that the bird has, has access to, to fresh, clean water because that is essential for good gut health. Feed formulation and quality is important. We need to get that correct so that the gut will function correctly and the bird gets all the nutrients it, re need, it requires. We also need to know when the gut is at risk of imbalance and support it accordingly. It's a lot easier to support a bird through a risk period than it is to try and fix the problem after it's occurred. And to, finally, we need to react quickly when a problem is seen so that it doesn't become more serious and, and infect the whole flock. And with that, I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Billy. Uh, that was really, really insightful. And, uh, and I was especially intrigued by the way you connected the strategies to use the feed additives to improve the gut health in, and especially in the critical times. And, and that brings me to our next presentation. Uh, and, and this is what, you know, like the, Mr. Klaus Kruger from, uh, from EW Nutrition will highlight the improving performance and the uh, gut health using one such innovation that is outcome of the EW relentless research and innovation. Uh, to introduce uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Kruger, I will call him Klaas. Uh, Klaas the, did his master's in, uh, from Berlin University back in 2004 in nutri animal nutrition and animal husbandry. Young Klaas joined the very young uh, EW Nutrition. And sometimes we say his uh, career and the growth uh, story of the EW Nutrition quite much in sync. But in between, he took also a chance to work at one of the leading amino acid producer to not only deepen his technical knowledge, but also widen his commercial experience with the industry. But the innovative culture, the uh, agile culture of EW Nutrition, and this the growth mindset brought him back home. And since, since he's back, he's leading the product management team as a director of product management for EW Nutrition. And I'm sure as I am excited, class will also be excited to present this uh, innovation that EW Nutrition is bringing uh, for the, our customers. Class, stage is all yours and we are all eager to listen to you. Ajay, many thanks. Uh, many thanks for introducing myself. Uh, and I would claim myself also to be still young. If you say EW Nutrition is still young, uh, maybe I can claim myself also to be still young. So thanks a lot for introducing myself and giving me the stage here to present our next generation gut health optimizer Ventaline. And welcome everybody out there. Seeing the unbelievable number of participants here, I feel we have chosen the right topics to talk about today. And also, of course, a special thanks to Dr. Bailey, who again gave a very good overview on the key challenges in broader gut health development. For me, this is now very easy as this basis is as this presentation is the basis to explain you to the audience why we at Eda Nutrition met to think outside the box and to improve, improve inside the gut. So let's start and talk about the biggest challenges in animal production today and the reason why we have developed Ventali.
should now come the next slide. Now it comes, sorry. So looking from our customer perspective, the biggest challenges in animal nutrition are maintaining or increasing profitability while reducing the amount of antibiotics used and fulfilling high sustainability standards. We know maintaining and increasing profitability depends on many factors, but two complementary approaches work without a fail, increasing performance and reducing losses from gut health issues. And based on that, we started an intensive development project to define the best possible answer to these questions. The result is extraordinary. The outcome of this evolution is a next generation gut health modifier with a greatly increased value for you, our customers, Ventardine. And in the next slides, I will take you on our journey. In a nutshell, Ventard is a novel gut health solution complemented with an in innovative delivery system. In broilers, which is our first species, it helps for stabilizing gut health, increasing body weight gain, and improving feed efficiency. Ventard is one of the most advanced phytogenic solutions to improve profitability with reduced need for medications. Overall, Ventard delivers to improve the net value per bird. You will ask, how do they do it? Ventard possesses three key modes of action. First, antimicrobial properties help to mitigate the growth of pathogens during high challenge conditions and to stabilize the gut microbiome. Second, antioxidant properties help to maintain gut antioxidant status by reducing free radicals, which can be produced by gut microbes, and thus it helps to control oxidative stress. And third, anti-inflammatory properties help to modulate the gut-associated immune system and mitigate excessive immune response. Having shown you the benefits of Ventard and how to get there, let me go one step back. In the first step, our colleagues from research and development were looking for a solution to meet the customer needs and expectations. The question was, which active ingredients and their individual combinations could meet or exceed these expectations? Our R&D team did a great job. Let me show the next three slides how to prove their findings. First, with minimum inhibitory concentration tests or MIG tests, done in-house at our research and development facility of EW Nutrition. We scanned and screened 1,000 of different ingredients and their combinations. The final Ventard combination shown here at the bottom of this table is effective against all these studied enteropathogenic bacteria. Dr. Bailey has mentioned these also. We have also tested Ventard against competitor products. And the results are obvious. Ventard is clearly making a difference. And in the next step, we wanted to understand whether Venta D also fulfills expectations on antioxidant effects. Let's have a look. In a so-called ORAC test, while well, ORAC means oxygen radical absorbent capacity, also done in-house, the antioxidant capacity of any compound can be measured in comparison to Trolox. Trolox is a water-soluble analog of vitamin E. And in this test, we could see that the active ingredient in Ventard being accountable for antioxidant effects is way stronger than the vitamin E analog Trolox. Better antioxidant effects lead to better gut barrier function. We heard that. And this can be measured by looking at the anti-inflammatory responses. Let's go to the next slide. To measure anti-inflammatory activity, we collaborated with the experts from Utrecht University in the Netherlands. To measure anti-inflammatory activity, we used biomarkers, in this case, cytokines. We have studied the effect of Ventard with cytokines like NF-kappa B and interleukin-6 and 10. These tests were done with cell cultures, both with an unchallenged positive and a negative control group challenged with LPS or lipopolysaccharides. In the graph here on the left side, you can see a significant and dose-dependent 
reduction in NF kappa B by ventadine. This shows a clear de decrease in pro inflammatory response. The second graph on the right side considers interleukin 6 and interleukin 10 as inflammatory cytokines. Interleukin 6 is known to increase inflammation, and interleukin 10 is known to control excessive inflammation. You can see significant reduction in the ratio of IL-6 to IL-10 in dose-dependent manner. And this ratio is indicative of immune response more tilted towards non-inflammatory responses. That's our theory, you may say, and that's basically true. At either nutrition, innovation starts with science. So what a kind of theory. So let's get more practical now and answer the question, will Ventod be able to perform where it should be? Let's start with physical product characteristics. With our unique in-house production technology, we receive very uniform practical particle sizes with excellent flowability. Let's enjoy this video for a sec. And this ensures homogeneous mixing of Ventar D when it's being used in premixes and or in feed. A homogeneous distribution in feed is the first step to deliver consistent results. The second requirement is that the product will stand the harsh feed production conditions, especially in broader production. And I will show you on the next slide how to prove it. We did a pelleting stability study of Ventar D also in comparison to other globally well-known products, which are claimed for encapsulation. We did three different temperature time combinations, like 70 degrees Celsius for 45 seconds, 80 degrees Celsius for 90 seconds, and 90 degrees for 180 seconds. At all these conditions, Ventar D was proven to be more stable to other solutions available in the market. The stability of Ventar D ensures higher bioavailability of active ingredients for the birds fed with pelleted feed. So now we know Ventar D is equally distributed in the feed and will reach the broiler house. Next challenge is, of course, the animal itself, or better, it's said, its gut, the location where Ventar D needs to perform. This picture you have already seen by Dr. Bailey. So if we consider most of the common pathogenic bacteria like Clostridium perfingens, E. coli, or Salmonella, they most commonly grow and cause infection from duodenum to cloaca. So the active ingredient needs to be released in these sides of the gut. The delivery system of Ventardi ensures release in the gut at the right side with optimized cost benefit. I hope we could show you that we did our homework and research and development and the proof of concept, but the truth, of course, is shown by the animals. Let's have a look. First, we have tested Ventar D and broilers in globally recognized contract research organizations located in Europe and the US with very robust trial designs. As an average of these trials, we could see Ventar D was able to improve all performance related parameters. In all these trials, we could see Ventar D was able to increase, increase the feed intake, increase the body weight gain, decrease mortality, and improve feed conversion. Overall, this results in a greatly improved European production efficiency factor. 8%, I think that speaks for itself. And these results, of course, we can see in practice. This field trial here with Ventar D was conducted within a commercial broiler operation in Europe and involved a total of 2.2 million Ross 308 birds. It has shown improved performance parameters like 0.3% better livability, 4 points better feed conversion, and 14 points improvement in European production efficiency factor. Besides the improved performance indicators, the customer was very impressed by a 7% reduction in foot per lesions. And finally, of course, the margin per bird was increased significantly. I'm sure we could gain your interest in the last minutes. So how is the next generation applied in practice? We recommend to use Ventor D at 100 gram per ton of feed from day one till catching 
all the time. Venter D contain, contains standardized active ingredients, which ensure consistent results and no batch to batch variation. And before we jump into the panel discussion, let me summarize why to choose Venter D. Venter D is the next generation gut health modifier with greatly improved value, which improved which improves profitability and reduces need for medications, being highly stable in challenging feed production conditions and being 100% backward integrated. What does that mean? At EW Nutrition, research, development, production, sales and service, you're gonna get out of one hand. Let me thank all people involved making this success story happen here with Ventadi. Venta D, we call it the yes and product because it delivers on the expectations and more. Ajay, back to you. Thank you, Klaas. And I think uh, that was really great. And uh, I think it's a very proud moment, not only for me, but the whole of the EW Nutrition colleagues and uh, team members. As we always say, it takes only one mind to come up with idea, but it takes many, many hearts to beat in the same passion to make it, to bring it into existence. And that's exactly what happened over the last two, three years of relentless work from ideation, innovation, product development, production, sales and services, everybody working together to bring it to our customers. And I think uh, this is really a moment to celebrate and I will appreciate class to, to recognize this if you can play the video that we made for Venta D for all our audiences. Here it is. The biggest challenge in animal production is maintaining or increasing profitability with high animal welfare and sustainability standards. EW Nutrition's continuous innovation brings more value to customers, supporting them individually through their journey. Maintaining and increasing profitability depends on many factors, but two complementary approaches work without fail. Increasing performance while reducing losses from gut health issues. Intensive customer interaction, market research, and biotechnology capabilities directly influence EW Nutrition's innovation pipeline. The result of this evolution is a next generation gut health modifier with a greatly increased value for the customer. Ventar D. Ventar D is one of the most advanced phytogenic solutions to improve profitability with reduced medication. It is novel in concept, formulation, and delivery. We call it the yes and product because yes, it delivers on the expectations and more. Thanks to its gut health enhancing modes of action, Ventar D reduces losses from digestive disorders, enabling producers to get the best results. And Ventar D is highly stable in challenging pelleting conditions. Plus, its free flowing formulation allows for homogeneous mixing. And there's one more thing. With EW Nutrition, 100% backward integration results in seamless customer experience through research, development, production, sales, and service. All delivered with our own personnel in over 50 countries living close to you and serving the world. We at EW Nutrition are incredibly proud to drive this product from idea all the way to our customer's doorstep. Ventar D. Think outside the box. Improve inside the gut. Thank you, Klaas. Like this, this was really great. And, um, uh, now the session for Q&A, uh, the question and answers. But before moving on, I would like to introduce our two panelists uh, who joined us uh, for the Q&A session. Uh, first one is, and they, they both play a very important role in journey of Ventadi moving on. And first one is uh, Dr. Tuan Van Garve, uh, our global technical director. Tuan started as a, a field poultry vet then went on to do his PhD from Utrecht University in the Netherlands, and then uh, worked at a very high positions in a different organization, specifically into R&D and to technical services. 
And over the last two decades, Tuan has established himself as one of the leading experts in commercial poultry production gut health. And the last but not least, Dr. Ruturaj Patil, a veterinarian himself and uh, working in the past 10 years in different organizations in commercial role, who will take care, nurture, and grow Ventardi as a Ventardi's product manager and make sure that our customers are served well. So welcome you both also on board uh, for this Q&A session. So I start, uh, start with uh, the question for Dr. Richard Bailey. Dr. Bailey, I, uh, you particularly touched a very good point on the development of the, of the gut. So how you can tell whether, the, uh, whether there has been good development of villi during the brooding period, particularly the very early days, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's a, a good question. And because we know that during this initial period of, of the bird's life, that so much is going into the development of the gut. If we get good seven day body weights and we have good uniformity of, uh, across the, the chicks at that seven days and, and 14 days, that generally is a good indicator that you've had good gut development and that will tell you that you're getting good um, villi development. If we don't see that good seven day body weights, then you know, then we have to be worried that we're not getting that good villi development. And very often, if I see issues with flocks at, you know, 24 days of age, if I then look at the seven day body weights, I see a, a, a low level of growth or poor uniformity. So really target that seven day period. Um, and, and that will give you good villi development. And um, mm -hmm. to, to just to lead to that question, what, what can we do if the villi don't develop properly during the brooding period? Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a, a good question as well, because obviously if we lose out on that growth during that, that brooding period, we never get that back. So that gut is always going to be more um, sort of sensitive to issues. And so if we know that, we can, we can have that in our mind as the bird goes through the rest of its life. So it could be that we need to give the, the birds a little bit of extra support um, you know, during risk periods um, and just be a little bit more aware of, of, of subtle changes in, in droppings or, or growth rates or water intake and feed intake. Because we, the, those birds, we have to react quickly, very quickly if we see a problem because they're not going to have that, that sort of innate inbuilt ability to, to cope. Um, you know, if you have shorter villi, you're closer to the bird's threshold. So they, it won't be able to take as many, uh, many external stresses. Yeah, so I think that means the, the reaching this active ingredients of whatever feed attitude we are using to reaching the gut in the right time and right place is very, very important because that leads my question to, to Dr. Ruturaj for you. Uh, it's why you think this innovative uh, system that you introduced in the, in the presentation class nicely introduced, uh, why you think that system will contribute into this particular part, into uh, to making the active ingredients available in the gut and why it's different than the other systems available in, the, in other solutions, different encapsulations, yeah. So uh, good question, Ajay. And, uh... It's very important to understand uh, different pathogenic bacteria may have different preferred sites of infection in the gut, starting from duodenum till cloaca. If you take, uh, for example, common pathogenic bacteria of broiler, like Clostridia, E. coli, Salmonella, they have different site of infection in the gut. And that becomes very important for active ingredients of any gut health additive to be released at the right site. And this point has been exactly addressed uh, with the Ventardi's uh, delivery system. Uh, if we consider uh, traditional encapsulation technologies, uh, depending on the encapsulation material use, either the active ingredients release too early or too late in the gut. But with Ventardi uh, delivery system, the active ingredients are being released from duodenum till cloaca. So uh, with Eventardi's uh, innovative delivery system, along with a very powerful active ingredients mixture, it brings best in class gut health benefits. So, so you mean to say it's not just uh, having a good, good composition of the active ingredients, but it also matters that it gets delivered where it is needed. 
And that's what this innovative delivery system does. So that also to connect the dots uh, from the presentation of Dr. Bailey, specifically the development of microflora. In uh, uh, presentation of, uh, of class, it was shown that the MIC values for pathogenic bacteria were, were very low and very impressive. But does that mean uh, the, uh, the Bentar D will have similar effect on the beneficial bacteria as well? Or you have a different, uh, different approach towards it, yeah? Plus, uh, if you don't mind, I will take this question. Of course. Thank you. So as I would say, it's, uh, it was, was one of the aim of our development for Bentar D. So while we looked into active ingredients for Bentar D, we try to get into the ingredients which will have lower MIC, minimum inhibitory concentration against uh, common pathogenic bacteria as shown by class. Why? They will have negligible effect against uh, beneficial bacteria. And we have tested for Ventadi uh, in lab studies with higher MIC value. So with this uh, differential antimicrobial activity, uh, Ventadi brings a very unique benefit to our customer uh, by setting the gut microbiota development in the right direction. So, so you mean to say that the, the whole selection of these ingredients that went, that is specifically targeting activity against pathogens, but having negligible effects against the beneficial bacteria, and that giving the, the tilting towards more beneficial bacteria having a chance to grow and the, and the microbiome developing in the right direction. Is that so? Absolutely. Okay. No, that's, that's great. And then, then, of course, the proof is in the pudding uh, class. You've shown also very good study about this, the, uh, with 2.2 million birds involved. Very impressive results. But there is a question here. Is that just a one-off result? Or do you have these similar experiences in other places? So one of the audience would like to know. Yeah. Yeah. OK, thank you, Ajay. Of course, and you're right, this trial uh, was very impressive, both because of the size and because of the results. And the trial shown in my presentation is not the reason why we claim consistent results, but the fact that we have run and are still running continuously several trials across the globe. And every time we see Ventadi is performing consistently, delivering de the desired return on investment. That's why we claim it to be consistent. And by the way, we have found <clears throat> effectiveness was even higher where conditions were more challenging. Even in one commercial facility, it was observed in Venta D group, there was no need to use therapeutic antibiotics anymore, while in the control group, there was still the need. So this shown to me that Venta D can also reduce the dependency on the antibiotics. And last but not least, we are very happy, of course, that this customer who I whom I shown uh, in the presentation is now including Ventar D in what Dr. Belli called in his strategy to antibiotics. Thank you. So this also then question goes to Thuan. Thuan, there is a question. Uh, if in my country, the AGPs are still a very common to use. I know we all believe that with current technologies, it's not about whether we can or cannot, whether we should or should not, uh, uh, replace the antibiotics. So uh, the question here, it's, uh, it's on the similar direction. There is still uh, a fear in the customers to take out the antibiotics. What will be your uh, experience and uh, experience with the uh, Ventadis, uh, uh, the R&D information and everything? Do you believe that this ne next generation additives can really help us go without antibiotics? You, you're muted, uh, Tuan, please. Yes, yeah, sorry for that. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it's a, it's a very valid question and uh, because it is a real question in, in many parts of the world. I mean, um, but I'm, I'm positive when you look at the progressive scientific knowledge. I mean, we have, as an industry, we have not, we have developed a lot of knowledge over the time, experiences in the field, but also scientific knowledge. When, when, like in, like in the example today, when you use that progressive scientific knowledge to develop the next generation of feed additives, then you can, you can, you can be confident that these products will give a, a provide a solid 
gut health support. And, uh, and you know, if I look, I really love the three phases that uh, Dr. Bailey was presenting. Uh, I think that uh, it, it really uh, helps to explain how a product like Venter D can help there in, uh, uh, you know, all of the three phases in a different way. Uh, and yes, it w will not autom be automatic that uh, by replacing, uh, for example, an AGP with a product like Venter D, you will be antibiotic free. I think uh, uh, it is a, it's, a, it's a big step ahead to, to be free of AGPs, but for antibiotic uh, free production, you might have to, uh, you know, revisit uh, the whole farming animal health management, but there's also other tools available to, uh, to help your birds through these more, trend, let's say, in the transition phase periods where there's increased challenge there. So, you have to look at a combination. You have to think out of the box, and uh, as, as we're saying today, and uh, uh, think holistically here. But definitely, I think that uh, uh, we have a great product here uh, in front of us that can really be a solid contributor to that, to that, um, you know, final goal to be a less and less reliable antibiotics, and only having to use antibiotics in. In uh, in emergency situations. Yeah, T thank you, thank you, Tuan. And I think this all connects the points. The as Dr. Bailey said, the strategy of the alternative strategies for antibiotics that should be combined with all these feed additive solutions and what we can do better into the farm management and other nutrition and everything. So it's collective importance, but these innovative solutions can play a major role into it. So with that, I think um, I know we can go along and uh, I will wish to continue this exciting discussion. But as they say, the time has no one's control. So uh, there, there are questions I see are still un unanswered in queue box. Uh, I apologize for not being uh, able to deal with all of them during this session, but don't you worry. We will come back to you with the answers to those questions specifically uh, in, in following days. But if you still, this webinar will be available on our website. Please go through it. And if you, if you have any other questions further, please feel free to write us on the webinar's email address, webinar at ewnutrition.com. Uh, please email us and we will follow your question and answer your questions uh, diligently. I take this point to thank Dr. Bailey for uh, his, uh, his contribution to the webinar. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Uh, my, our, our panelist, uh, Thuan, uh, Klaas, Ruturaj, and most importantly, our, uh, our audience to, to take some time to listen to uh, this webinar and putting these nice questions there. And uh, please, 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 in these uh, unprecedented times, take care of yourself, stay healthy, stay safe, but most importantly, keep doing the great work that we all are doing in this industry. Thank you and bye for now. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Ajay. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Stay healthy. Bye-bye.